But as all of us in this room know, we live in difficult times. All of us in this room know that there are instances where that pendulum of civility, of decency, of acceptance today has swung so far in the wrong direction. Today we see people openly questioning the loyalty and the patriotism of their fellow Americans for how they look, how they worship, how they love. And sadly, these messengers are no longer confined to those dark recesses of the internet where they once hid. They've been emboldened. They've come out of their shadows. They've been emboldened because some of our elected leaders encourage their behavior, or because others of them ignore it or countenance it, or simply perhaps because none of us are doing our part to call it out when we see it in the public square. And unfortunately, we've seen these acts of violence and hate manifest themselves in vandalism in this county and across the state where individuals have painted the walls of schools, of churches, of mosques, of homes with words and with images and with symbols that we had thought had long disappeared from our lexicon or were part of our distant memories. We thought as a society we had grown past their use beyond their acceptability. But as if that weren't enough, we've also seen an increase in acts of physical violence driven by hate across the country. Now, while I haven't experienced this type of physical violence firsthand, I have experienced this rising tide of hate and intolerance, from hateful comments online to hateful comments and, and troubling behavior in public. What I have seen is deeply concerning to me, and it should be concerning to all of us in this room. And it's raised more of a concern with me because some of these experiences have touched my children. And uh, as I'm sure everyone in this audience hopes, I hope that my children are never touched by intolerance and hate. So let me just share with you one recent example involving just a simple trip that I took with one of my daughters to the grocery store. As we were in the aisle, in the candy aisle of the grocery store, having really a substantive debate with a nine-year-old over what candy she should get because she was only allowed to get one. Those were her mother's rules, not mine. <laughs> and she was debating between Twizzlers and Sour Patch Kids, and I was secretly hoping she would go with the Twizzlers because they're my favorite. <laughs> I saw a scene begin to unfold that I've seen play out many times in my life, unfortunately. I, see, I saw a mother with her child in tow, who was no more than 10 to 12 years old, turned the corner, and they were coming towards me. And I locked eyes with the kid, and I knew where this was going. It was going to go in one of two directions. Either he was going to go the terrorist route, or he was going to ask me for three wishes. <laughs> but unfortunately for me that day, he went the terrorist route. And as he was within earshot of me and my daughter, he turned to his mother and said, look, Mom, Osama bin Laden. The two of them kept walking. The mother didn't reprimand the child. She didn't say anything. And I didn't say anything either. I could have told them that I was a Sikh, not a Muslim. I could have told them that even then, Islam is not some sort of monolith, that bin Laden was not representative of an entire religion. I could have told him that I was the Bergen County prosecutor at the time, the chief law enforcement officer in this county. I didn't do that. I didn't do any of that because he was a kid. And he learned that behavior from a parent. And that behavior was reinforced by images that he had seen on television of turbaned men like me associated with acts of violence without ever a distinction being made about who we are, what we actually represent, and what we actually believe. But I did take that moment to teach my daughter a lesson. I told her to honor cultural differences, to honor her religion, to accept others. But to be honest, my daughter doesn't need that reminder. She's learned that from her mother. She's learned that from me. She's learned that from everyone around her. But what she does need to know is that we as a society are going to push back against this type of behavior when we see it. And to do that, 
all of us in this room, in this state, all of us need to acknowledge when there's an act of hate or intolerance against one community, it's an act of hate and intolerance against all communities. We have to speak out against intolerance and hate wherever we see it, in whatever form we see it. 